This is Mongolia Mindset, and today we're going to be breaking down um, what the typology community gets absolutely wrong, okay? This shit is absolutely appalling and it's atrocious. And today, me and Christian will be breaking down why these are wrong. And uh, like we always say, awareness is always king, okay? Um, so the first thing we'll be talking about is uh, in the typology people uh, community, they don't think about gender first, right? They jump automatically to type. Right. And the first thing you should always do is look at gender, gender. Right. Because um, an ISTP male is not the same as an ISTP woman. They may have the same functions, but everything else is totally different in two different worlds. Right. But somehow they get lumped together and people try to use, uh, you know, the theory together. Right. Uh, Chris, what do you guys say about that? Yeah. And if you uh, if you notice in our previous presentations, when we talk about subtypes, we mentioned about hormonal differences and how it creates different subtypes within the types well if you know women have a, diff a different hormonal profile than men they have 10 times less testosterone than men also societal expectations are also different and the functions that society promotes are also different so what you get is a different contextual self and they present differently based on gender and people don't talk enough about that so I, I think a lot of people make a huge blunder um, in that realm because they try to treat them um, as they would treat an INTJ male or like I said, the INTJ male and INTJ woman, man. I don't care who it is. I don't care what's going on. If you're dealing with a woman, you have to understand that you're dealing with a woman, right? You can, I can't treat uh, a woman like I would treat Christian, right? It's not going to fly. It's never going to fly, Okay. Um, if you think it's going to fly long term, you're going to get burned, okay? Um, and your results are going to be piss poor, all right? So another thing we notice is, right, is um, depending on your type, um, the functions come out differently, right? So what that looks like is Christian has FE inferior, right? And INTP also has FE inferior, right? Um, and a lot of the books or in the literature, um, they try to group them all together, right? But the thing is, is that Christian has probably um, an easier chance to deal with his SC, I mean, FE inferior, because of the fact that he has SE and NI, right? Um, as opposed to an INTP has NE and SI, right? And they also have SI in that child spot, which makes them more likely to not deal with people and stay in their own comfort zone, right? Um, so it's gonna be a lot harder to work on that FE inferior. It's gonna be, um, and not even to mention like the way that the FE inferior manifests, it's gonna be a lot different because of the functions, right? And that's just not talked about. Right. Um, that NE is going to do different things than what Christian's SE would do. Mm -hmm. right? And because of that, it's going to manifest slightly differently. But overall, the big picture is, is the same. But the way it's going to manifest the, the, the uh, obstacles, the challenges that, that the person is going to have to go through is, is going to be different. One way you could think about it, you know, the first and the fourth slot are the spine of the personality. Second and third are the arms. So the way that you kind of act on these functions is different based on your type because of those arms or they're kind of like the input yet that you put in how you input into the world is based on these arms and they are different so they express differently and another thing i'll say like let's say for instance you take an istj right and you take an intj right both of them have fe tricks right but an intj is going to struggle a lot more with F, uh, fp trickster than the istj why because the istj is affiliate they're about cooperation they're about interdependence why the intj is about um they're doing their own thing they're pragmatic they're, um about autonomous right so they're gonna get nailed a lot harder and, and find it a, a lot harder to deal with than the istj right a, another problem I really have, and this is what really shocks me about um, typology in general, is that people are just here to to be a part of a community, right? They're not really um, trying to become uh, a better version of themselves. It, it's, it shocks me because it's kind of like if you're playing chess and you will fall into the same trap over and over and over again, and you and you know what you should do. It's kind of it's kind of stupid to me. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's a big thing that I had to come to um, grips with is that people are just here for a community. They're not actually trying to learn the material. They're not going to hit the books. They're not going to learn the literature. And it just shocks me that they just want to be pretty much accepted, right? They just want to be somewhere where they feel accepted for being different. 
Well, I think uh, a lot of people who get into typology, uh, they come in looking for answers due to their personality. Maybe they're not really socially calibrated. So finally, when they come into typology to try to understand themselves, they find a community. And it's the community that they always wanted, right? And that kind of conflicts with the way that Mercer and I think, which is more about you know personal development, always trying to be better, trying to improve your life. Uh, and you know it's something that we have to come to grips with. But if you do want to become better, then you can always come right here to this channel and give us a thousand likes because uh, you know that's gonna make you better. Just playing. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's so important to be growing yourself okay it's important because like i always talk about that positive feedback system right once you start getting in a positive the positive keeps spinning off the positive but mm -hmm. when you're in a negative it's hard as fuck to get out of the negative right mm -hmm. um but the good thing about typology is you have the blueprint to yourself there's no excuses to be getting uh railroaded or or, or just coming up with piss poor results when you actually know what's going on, you have the blueprint and people just don't use it. Mm -hmm. They just want to say, oh, you know, I got this problem and, and, and I can't grow or I got this problem. And, um, you know, it's like it's almost like they get trapped into um, the personality type instead of what we try to preach on this channel, which is uh, being so good that people fucking mistype you. Mm -hmm. To get up to that prodigy demigod level, right? That That's to go here. That to be balling on all fronts, okay? Uh, because when you're doing that, it's so much easier to be developed, but you know, I, you know, I do digress. People, you know, see things differently than me. Yeah, like like you so, always say on the channel, awareness is king. And why is it king? Because it could give you the proper understanding and language to address those issues. If you don't choose to address those issues, then you're giving your you're doing yourself a disservice. That's why on this channel we always promote awareness and action. Okay, not just awareness for the sake of awareness. You need to implement the stuff that we're talking about and that you find, you know, in the community. Yeah, and that, that's a good way to understand your comprehension, right? If you can implement things, then you actually understand what you have been learning, right? Mm -hmm. It's a lot harder to do, guys, but you can do it, right? Uh, so we're going to get into the next one, right? So we have the stereotypes which lead individuals to not embrace type, right? They don't understand that it is a best fit type, right? Best fit. That doesn't mean you're a hundred percent a type, right? That means you have the preferences of that type, right? There's a whole bunch of nurture type things that also go on that may contribute to, you know, different functions being stronger than certain other functions or like, you know, when you actually get into the functions, you understand the introverted functions are a lot more subjective, right? You may not be on the same level with somebody with a different, you know, I mean, with the same type as you based on, you know, where you are in life, right? Your NI not, may not fucking be there. You might be an INTJ, but your fucking NI sucks, okay? Compared to another INTJ who's went through different things, right? Um, so you gotta real, you gotta really understand that, right? Um, and realizing that there's about the core self, the developed self, and the contextual self, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And just understanding that you have those preferences. Those preferences are part of the core self, right? There's, you know, things that you learn over time and that becomes a developed self, whether it comes from the environment or from the core self pushing up, okay? It's important to realize the limits of typology. I think uh, in the way that it's most helpful is that it gives you language to describe your preferences, like Mercer is saying. It's not really a predictor of, you know, exactly how you're going to behave or exactly how your relationships are going to turn out because ultimately that's on you and the experiences that you've had throughout your life you know just because i'm an istp by description doesn't mean that i need to go and become a mechanic and do all the stereotypical things that istps do it just describes you know my tendencies in a way and that's how i use it and that's how it's most helpful for me and I think it will be most helpful for you if you kind of just let go of some of these stereotypes and just, you know, live your life with these descriptions in mind, you know. Uh, and the next one is there's no ways to actual measure growth, right? That's very hard. Like you just find your type, 
And there's no way to be like, okay, I'm a stage three ENTJ, or I'm a stage five ENTJ, or I'm a stage seven, eight, nine, ten, or this is how I get to this stage, or this is how I get to that stage. You know, there's nothing really there. Um, and I think maybe in the future, me and Christian will address that, and maybe we'll come up with our own blueprint of how you know each type can um, measure growth, right? Because you know we have our um, system where we're trying to make it more. Um, effective we're trying to make it more more realistic you know yeah. um when we're talking about like going from average to above average to prodigy to uh jimmy guy right we, we want everybody to try to squeeze their ass in the prodigy level mm -hmm. um that's what this channel is about but there's no real things out there to measure that right, right. and the thing about this community is that they'll point and say well this person is not this type and this type but you can't even measure growth. You don't even know, like maybe um, you're an ENTP, but you're not fucking Kanye West. Like, come on, like there's levels to this shit. Yeah, the the measuring growth thing, it's kind of nebulous. It's kind of in the air. It's an estimate, right? I think um, part of the things that you could do to fix that is maybe just identify your inferior function and see if you are more proficient than the average. That's about as good as you could do. Or maybe uh, identify your child function and make sure that it's not running wild, you know, in your life. And those two metrics are pretty good at you kind of measuring your progress, but it's not exact. And I don't think it'll ever be exact. I mean, even medically, you know, we, we work in the medical sciences. We know that the brain is largely uh, misunderstood. We know more or less how it works, but not exactly, you know, and then when you extrapolate that to, you know, psychological, theoretical concepts, it becomes even more nebulous. Um, I think another way you can kind of look at uh, the inferior function, right, is to understand or the more you feel comfortable using it, probably the better you are in the growth realm, right? Mm -hmm. If you feel like, damn, I don't want nothing to do with it, then you probably just stay zero to one, you know, that's just reality, right? But the more you're able to dig into it and the longer you've been, you're able to use it, then that probably will show that you're better off, right? And I think a lot of people miss that trickster function. That's the one that's going to blow up your life most of the times. That's the one you got to be on guard with. That's the one that fucks people's life up. It's, it's the trickster function because it's, completely unaware like let's say for instance for the entjs right they get go 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 all the time so they end up dying from heart attacks and strokes and all this other fucking shit right um that's what's gonna nail you in your ass not the inferior function right so like for instance there was a time where christian had to wheel my ass into the hospital you know if you don't understand that you need to figure out ways to get a hold of that some bitch you, you're going to repeat the same thing that happens to a lot of the other people. Another thing is that people are not expressing how many hours it takes to practice to become effective with type, right? I've always been upfront with you guys. It's not something that you're going to pick up day one, right? It may seem like you could just pick it up and just run outside with it and use it. Um, and that's one of the biggest problems is that people do that instead of honing the crap. Uh, you're going to have to read the books. You're going to have to try. You're going to have to be wrong. And because of the system itself, like you can, your brain can go out and see things that you want to exist. Right. Mm -hmm. I can say, oh, Christian's INTJ. And then my brain will naturally start to find things that make Christian look like an INTJ. Mm -hmm. Right. But that's fucking wrong. Right. Yeah. Um, so that that's one of the problems with type as well. And like, you have to be willing to do the work, right? You have to be willing to keep trying and keep trying. You're going to get shit wrong. I get shit wrong all the time, mm -hmm. you know, but you got to remember at the same time, there's no clock, invisible clock on my head, right? Like you got to see it, in the group, there's over 500 videos, dude. And most of the videos are around the fucking hour, right? And then there's other shit you guys don't even see off screen, right? So there's, an ass load of hours that I've been doing type, right? You want to be on the same level as me, you have to do the fucking work. And then on that on that same note that you just mentioned, uh, a lot of people fall in love with the concept of their type or they have a preference they would like to be a type. And just that in itself gives you a bias to kind of just look at your life and just highlight the things that will make you fit with that type. You know, that's that cognitive bias happens both ways, not just you typing other people happens to yourself as well. So really 
you know, put in put in the hours necessary and try to be as unbiased as possible. I mean, I don't get why people fall in love with certain types. I know there's preferences and like they have an invisible tier list in their mind. But uh, just remember, like these are just like preferences and tendencies and any type can be successful, not just the ones that you like. Okay, so. I mean, and I'll talk about the, you know, people just like, you know, do the bare minimum and then they run online and, and, and they, you know, go to personal database or something and they start voicing their opinion. It's like, like so many people are just fucking flat out fucking wrong, right? It's flat out wrong. They read some shit from a blog spot. They read it from jimmyjohns.com. I don't fucking know. And they all put shit together and they're putting up uh, um, their thoughts. And it's like, bro, just shut the fuck up, bro. You just, and that, but that, that affects the community as well. Um, unfortunately. So, like I said, always do the fucking work. Do the work. Ain't no way of getting around the fucking work. You want to be something, you got to do the work, right? Another thing here is that there's nothing quantitative to actually find type. There's nothing quantitative, right? Like, as me and Christian, we work um, as scientists, right? We have quantifiable tests that find like whether it be um, an antigen or whatnot, we have quantifiable tests that can do that, that can read a certain uh, measured value, right? Right. You will not get that in typology. The best thing that they have right now is the brain scans, and they can only tell you what's most likely there, not definitively uh, absolute, okay? So you always got to keep that in mind, guys. Even when you're doing the typing with me, that's just my opinion of what I'm seeing. Hopefully, I backed up with enough enough facts to prove it. But again, it has my opinion on it. And uh, just to um, kind of be quick about it, just to explain it, you know, let's say you have qualitative tests and quantitative tests. Okay, a quantitative test gives you a specific concentration of whatever you're measuring to test, right? And there's nothing like that in typology. You can't just say, okay, this this person has 85% abstraction tendencies, okay? Like, it that is not possible in typology, okay? And even the qualitative test is not definitive because, you know, like Mercer said, it's subjective to the person typing you. It's just giving you an idea of what you may be. And, uh, you know, you're supposed to you yourself go and do the work like Mercer mentioned to see if that opinion is you know um consistent with your tendencies because we we can't know your whole life you know like that's not possible within an hour typing session you know you know your life more than Mercer knows but he's giving you an idea based on his understanding of typology and temperaments etc you know it's supposed to help you find your personality okay best fit type yeah and i always say hey man always do the work yourself man like all i can do is try to speed up your journey speed up your journey you know to find out who you are right i think most of the time i get it right but you know they i will always tell you to do the work yourself right i hate a fucking dummy i fucking hate dummies mm -hmm. um so don't be a fucking dumbass um, but like you said, when, when you're getting in qualitative and uh, qualitative and quantitative, there's not even anything that's qualitative, right? That says positive or negative, right? Mm -hmm. There's not even anything that's qualitative. So that, that's a big problem there as well. And like you said, me and Christian have strong science backgrounds. Um, another problem is that people regurgitate information uh, from other people, right? Without actually going and doing the work of verifying. I don't know how many times I've heard this person's wrong or that person's wrong. And then when you ask them why this person wrong, they, they start foaming at the lips, right? Because they don't actually know why that person's wrong. They're just saying what they heard somebody else say. And they've never actually picked up a book or anything or read that person's work. I don't know how many people say David Kersey is wrong with this. And I say, hey, you know, uh, can you can you show me like where 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 uh, you think he's wrong or um, what facts you think are, are incorrect or anything like that? And they've never read the fucking book. Mm -hmm. They don't even have the fucking book. Mm -hmm. You know, like so, it's just like sometimes it's like, bro, don't just go listen to what somebody else is saying. Actually, read the actual sources. Figure out for yourself. Like I can read any of these fucking typology books, and I know which what shit to pull out and what shit not to. Okay, um, 
So that that's something like people should, you know, do. Like you have to read John BB shit, right? I know you guys come to this channel and you're relying on uh Mercy and Christian, you know, uh strongly me, but um at the end of the day, you have to do it yourself. It's like reading the fucking Bible. Right. I never let a motherfucker read the Bible and tell me what's in the Bible. It's just never gonna happen. It's never gonna happen. Just do your reading, man. Do your reading. And I know that's getting more rare as time goes on because uh yeah. you know it's so easy to just hop online and then just listen to people who read the stuff i mean this happens at every level in every genre i mean um it's like there's so many youtube channels right now that basically just regurgitate the literature for whatever field right and they just present their ideas as their own now, I'm not saying Mercer does this because Mercer actually references the literature he's reading, which is actually the responsible thing to do. But you'd be surprised how many YouTubers are just giving out their ideas, but it's not really their ideas. It's really books they're reading and they're stealing the ideas. OK, so be mindful of that as well. And I think a lot of times like they don't actually they do a, a fucking half job. Right. So they may read or pick and choose when they read and then they present that, right? That's a big problem as well. And if you're listening to their material, you're going to fall right into that big ass hole. It's called the Swiss cheese effect, okay? You're going to fall right into that big ass hole, okay? Mm -hmm. um, you're going to have the same holes in their game that, that they have, right? Mm -hmm. Or it might even be fucking bigger because you didn't fucking read it to begin with, okay? Mm -hmm. um, so always, always, always... Go back to the sources, guys, always. Mm -hmm. um, also, like people spinning off alt uh, alternatives to type, right? You got different systems saying this system or that system or this system or that system, right? Uh, and the further you get away from like the actual core principles of type, the shittier it's going to be. But the thing is about psychology, you can always bend that bitch any way you want to, mm -hmm. right? All you need is somebody to become the de facto leader and then say, well, they created uh, a mouse, rat, mouse, dog, dragon, whatever, and then put the shit with type and then change it to some other shit and then say, well, you're not this one because of this, and, you know, so you got to be careful of that shit. Because we are lab scientists, we have a science background. I'm just going to give you a general uh, view of how, you know, testing works. Okay. So like more specific it is, the methodology has to be more advanced to get more and more specific. So basically, they're, the people that are claiming that they can go beyond typology, right? Like they can implement methods after typology. It's basically they're claiming that they can be more specific, but they don't have a new method. They're still just using the same subjective method that they use to just bare bones type people. So as you get more specific and the method is not adequate enough then basically they're just spouting bullshit. You know, there's no way that they can verify the things that they're saying because there's already not even a method to verify the things that are more generalized than that. If you follow somebody who's claiming they could be more specific than, you know, cognitive functions, in my opinion, is complete BS. Okay. The last one is like not like realizing that anything in psychology realm can be disproven incomplete or updated right um that's a big one like when you're dealing with people i don't know what it is with like people in the typology space but they don't understand how science works and that's just, I'm just straight up appalling to me like they don't know how science works right um like for instance you know, with psychology, you know, there's a lack of precision. There's a lack of clarity. There's a lack of consistency. There's a lack of um, replication. And there's a lack of theoretical progress. Right. And that's just because of the realm that that uh, psychology is in. Right. It's very abstract, um, mm -hmm. makes things hard to test, makes things hard to like falsify. Right. Um, there's no like consistency there. Right. Um, multiple people state different hypotheses, right? Then you got lack of rep uh, replication, right? So that there's a whole bunch of studies that have been disproven or debunked um, when they try to replicate these uh, psychology studies. Um, so you got to be very mindful that, like a lot of those, like I think that prison one that they had, that shit was debunked. They couldn't replicate some bitch. Part of the misconception with science is that 
you know, because it attempts to be objective and factual, that it should never change. But the things, the thing is, the facts change with the methodologies. Like I mentioned before, as you get better and better methodologies, you get more and more specific information, more data, and then you have to change the theories. The theories change with the amount of data available and the methodologies available like people get that wrong that's why they mistrust science because they think it changes too much but if it didn't change with the data then it would just be playing wrong over time you know like it's always attempting to improve we we still think it's flat earth you know yeah yeah like uh you know with more data and more methods you can update the theories and the available facts um, you know, we try to get as objective as possible, but there's limits. And then when you add a field like um, psychology, psychology is very metaphysical because personality, uh, you know, when you when you bring it to the science, you know, in your brain, it's just electrical impulses going on in your brain, right? And then that's bringing something metaphysical f- forward, you know, your personality, right? And that is very hard to measure. Like we mentioned, there's, it, it's not a quantifiable method to measure personality. It, it kind of mixes in a way with philosophy in a way, okay? And society, and it becomes very convoluted, very complex. Uh, and, and you got to understand that. You got to understand that there's limits to what we can measure. I mean, maybe in the future, maybe uh, a lot of things will be able, you'll be able to measure like, things like the neurotransmitters, right? Because based off, you know, neurotransmitters, your personality may come out or may not. It may be changing based off the neurotransmitters, right? Um, like, let's say, for instance, you're low in serotonin and norepinephrine and stuff of that nature. Um, your personality might be distorted based off of that, right? Um, but like, let's say, maybe in the future, they're able to accurately measure those, right? Let's say maybe an ENTJ has a certain amount of testosterone, a uh, certain level of acetylcholine, a certain level of these, and maybe that could help us find type, you know, maybe in the future. But mm-hmm. as of right now, can't fucking do that. Just a, as a little caveat as well, um, you know, because AI is really coming forth and people are trying to produce artificial intelligence. There's scientists that are even saying like they lay the groundwork for AI to to uh, work, but they don't exactly understand how the AI is actually learning. OK, and that's the thing that, they, that our brains are very similar to that. Our personalities is kind of like an AI, you know, like the you got to think the brain is kind of like the computer and, you know, our intelligence, our humanity, our personality is kind of like an AI that came forth from that technology but we don't really exactly understand how that came forth so even it, even the scientists trying to recreate an intelligence can't understand how it, it really works and it's going to be very hard for you to understand how your own ai or personality works in your own brain okay uh so you just got to understand the limits to the science and just do uh the best you can and try to get some value out of it okay try to you know get self-development out of the information. Yeah, I mean, like we said, like awareness is key, right? You notice little, you know, troubles here and there and you try to fix those troubles. It's like understanding um, on a chessboard, you keep falling for the same shit, like try to use type to do that, right? But also understand that it's limitations as well, right? Um, Because like me and Christian always talked about like a lot of people don't understand science, which is crazy. This is supposed to be an abstract space and people don't understand fucking how science works. It's fucking crazy to me. Like, what the fuck? I remember one time we got, you remember the time we got in a discussion with the guy we had to show him how to measure gravity? Oh, yeah, yeah. And how things fall at a certain rate and mm-hmm. how you can measure that? Mm-hmm. That shit blows my fucking mind, bro. What the fuck you doing in school? In high school. Like, what the fuck you doing? That's a, that's another thing. Uh, th- This might be out of um out of the context of the conversation but a lot of people didn't pay attention in high school bro <laughs> <laughs> and you know and you know it's funny it's like I mean, or, or in college i don't fucking no, know no 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 like, in high school bro know, in high school like a lot of people say like oh all the shit that they teach you in high school is useless but the, most of the reason why people are idiots is because they didn't pay attention in high school i swear like that's why people like they don't know math they get in debt. They don't know what interest rates are. They don't know what supply and demand is. They don't know what gravity is. 
They don't know anything, bro. And then they're like, bro, high school's useless. You didn't even pay attention. You didn't learn shit. That's why you're an idiot, okay? (laughs) I mean, it just shocks me sometimes, bro. Like, you know, just like people lazy as fuck. One, people lazy. Two, people don't want to do the work. Um, And three, people can't read. Four people can't comprehend, and five people can't implement. It's, it's a sad, sad, sad world, man. But, you know, thank God you guys come over here, and you guys know that I really care about delivering the best quality I can for you guys. You should see how many fucking books I've read and have how much shit I have thrown out um, to create the shit that we create over here um, to get you guys the best information. Yeah, and if you like the video, go ahead. You already know. Go down there, hit that like button. I want to see at least 50 likes so that we can keep providing great content to you guys. And Mercer and I are working behind the scenes. We got some cool shit coming up. So go ahead and subscribe as well so that you don't miss that. And comment below any uh, misconceptions you think uh, we should be aware of. And maybe we'll drop another video and talk about those. Okay. So drop those in the comments. And as always, guys, we love having y'all watch our stuff. Um, we love seeing you guys in the Discord. We're going to uh, keep keep doing this, and we'll keep growing, guys. Catch you in the next one. Peace out.